Uh, well, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Zhu Yuncheng. Uh, I'm a software engineer in Huawei, and I have been working in the operation and maintenance area for about three years. And I also actively involved in the OpenLA community as a committer in CyberSeq. And uh, I'm glad to be here and share with you all our latest progress about the project called AOPS. Yeah, uh, here I'm going to introduce it from the four aspects. So firstly, uh, what is this AOPS? Um, so broadly speaking, AOPS is an end-to-end -end solution to, for users to, uh, for detection and diagnosis and repair. So here we divide the whole process of uh, the maintenance work to three layers. The bottom layer, we call it uh, data collection layer. Here we have a, an agent to you know, collect the data from user's host. Uh, we have an uh, agent to control many uh, different collection tools to collect. And the data includes the uh, metric data as well as the log data. And one of the most important tool is called Galagolfer. So it uses eBPF to collect very deep level data from both and user mode. And the middle layer, we call it initial diagnosis layer. So in this layer, we can uh, still use some tools to uh, you know, do some, uh, conduct some initial diagnosis so that we don't have to push the heavy data to the outside. For instance, if you, use, uh, if you want to try to diagnose the OOM right, out of memory, you don't have to um, well, trans, uh, transform the VM core to outside, which is very uh, heavy. And the top layer, uh, we build a set of microservices and uh, support many features so user can, uh, for instance, do the uh, routine inspections and AI diagnose and CV hotfix and other many interesting features. And for user to uh, scan and uh, repair the entire cluster, not only one. Uh, so uh, here I'm going to introduce the uh, three main features. Firstly, uh, it's the full stack observability. Uh, it is provided by Calagopher, which is a daemon that provides a uh, lot of uh, eBPF-based probes uh, combined with the U-probe and TracePoint and K-probe to con co uh, collect the data from the kernel and uh, driver and syscall. So uh, it's very convenient to a user to uh, develop their own plugin. Yeah. So right now we have covered the kernel runtime and some other uh, user mode software like Redis and Nginx. So uh, as you can see, uh, it, when we got the data from the probes, it can be restore, uh, uh, it, it can be uh, stored as a matrix in the database. For instance, uh, Prometheus, right? Or it can be transferred via Kafka to uh, for other use. And uh, with the data we have, we can do many interesting things, like we can draw a real-time topology based on the uh, TCP or IP communication data. And with the topology, we can do the cluster fault localizations uh, with the data like you know, the response time or latency of the request. You can easily localize the fault, and you can see uh, which part of the cluster is wrong. And finally, you can also uh, fault, uh, do the fault diagnosis. We have covered like I.O. and memory and uh, even performance. Uh, you, you can do the online pro, uh, performance profiling. Yeah, which is, pre which is pretty cool. Uh, here is some charts uh, made by the Galagopher. You can see it covers most of the useful data we can uh, use in daily maintenance work like the applications, API performance, and the TCP IP data. And also, uh, they can draw the flame graph of the CPU or memory. And they can also do the online profiling based on the on-CPU or off-CPU analysis. And another function of AOPS is the vulnerability management. As we all know, uh, the security of OS is very important, right? And OpenOla, uh, publish the uh, update, brand, uh, update version uh, every week. So for instance, if you have a CVE in your kernel, you can just uh, download the upgraded one to uh, upgrade, up upgrade the kernel and then reboot the system, uh, the system, and the CVE will be fixed. 
but uh, in most cases, uh, this will be work. But in some emergency cases, uh, so user cannot just reboot the system and active the new kernel, right? So we can use the hot patches. And here we build a brand new uh, hot patch production pipeline and to produce the pipeline in, uh, with the code patch PR, which, will, uh, which I will uh, describe later in the demo. And with the published uh, hot patch, we can scan the host in the AOPS website, and we can also generate a fixed task to define the host you want to fix and the CV you want to fix, and even the fixed way, like you want to use code patch or hot patch to fix the CV. Then uh, after the, hot patch, uh, the, the CV is fixed by code patch or hot patch, we will scan it again, and we will update the uh, state in our database. So uh, since every uh, uh, so since we can scan and repair it in batches, the efficiency is very uh, increased uh, significantly. And how do we my, uh, my manage the uh, hot patch in the system? So we try to be consistent to users' habits. Uh, in OpenOwner, we use DNF to manage the packages. So here, we just uh, develop another DNF plugin to manage the hot patch life cycles. And you can see here, uh, we support different uh, command of the DNF uh, to scan the CV and also uh, install and upgrade the hot patches. And um, in the in a lower level, we actually uh, call the uh, syscare using the command line. And syscare is another open source project in OpenOwner. It unifies the key patch and your patch external interfaces, so it is easy to uh, manage both of them at the same time. And uh, it also provides a complete life cycle management from the uh, not applied to deactivated then active. And the traditional hot patch will be deactivated after you reboot the system. So the CV will be exposed again, uh, which is not what we want. So here we add a new state called accepted. So uh, if you accept the hot patch, means uh, after you reboot, the hot, the hot patch will be active again automatically, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, so the finally, uh, final uh, feature I want to introduce is the configuration tracking. Uh, according to the statistics of our maintenance as, and SRE team, we found that over 80% of OS failure caused by the changement of configurations. Like uh, if you uh, change the slash e, this slash F, uh, FTAB, it uh, easily can cause the boot failure, right? And here we set the baseline of the host, and uh, we will regular scan all the hosts and report the detected modifications. And uh, we will also do the version control of the configurations. Yeah. And uh, so finally, uh, we have a future plan of uh, combining the GPT with our uh, AOPS. So we try to, uh, we, we have chosen the GPT called LogGPT to help us to uh, predict the next line of the log so that we can compare the prediction log with the actual log to see if there is anything uh, goes wrong. So uh, we can just uh, give the model the log file, like the messages file, and the code file and the case file of the uh, maintainer's work. It will uh, uh, do a great job and help us to uh, tell the log if have to have anything wrong, not just uh, give them a specific rule, right? So uh, here I prepared two demo for hotfix. Uh, the first one is how we made a hot patch in the community. So firstly, uh, we just uh, uh, find the PR in the kernel repository. And here, um, I just randomly pick one. And here, we just need to comment here, make a comment here. Here I, I, here I omit some parameters. Uh, and it will automatically trigger a new PR in the hot patch meta repository. And in this PR, it will record some uh, basic info about the hot patches, like uh, which source RPM I'm going to use and which debug info RPM and the specific uh, content of the patch. 
so the PR will uh, start running with the CI system. And after it, the build is done, we will uh, test it in community. And you can uh, also see the anniversary we have published here. So here are the anniversaries we have, we have published, and you can see the detail of the, about the CVE, and also you can download the hot patch online. Yeah. So with the metadata on the PR, you can actually rebuild this, the hot patch by yourself. Uh, okay. The next PR, uh, the next demo is uh, a demo show how we fix it by AOPS. So firstly, we log in and we have a dashboard here to show some basic info about the cluster. And here we can see all the hosts we have in the cluster and their um, like online, online status. And we can also add the host in batches with Excel. And here we can also separate them in groups. Uh, and in the CV page, we can see all the hosts we have, uh, all the CVs we have in the cluster, and how to fix them, the specific RPM and their version. Then we can, uh, okay, uh, we can also see how many fi uh, how many CV we have fixed, and uh, we can also see the CV from the host perspective. So here we just uh, enter one host and we can uh, scan it and we can also export the CV information about the host. Uh, it will generate the Excel which shows the detail about the uh, host CV info. Yeah, so here uh, I just choose the CV which can be fixed by hot patch. And here we choose hot patch to fix the CV and generate a task. So here I accept the hot patch to activate even after reboot. So then the uh, task start running, and uh, we can see some uh, detail in the task. So after the task is done, you can see the log of the task. Basically, it's a DNF log. And if you regret to, okay, uh, here I just show the CV has been fixed, right? And we can also see the hot patch status by our hot patch plugin. And if you feel regret to fix this CV, you can also generate a rollback, a rollback task. And after rollback, it will change to the previous state. So here, uh, when we uh, list the CV, uh, list the hot patch again, it is gone. Yeah. Uh, that's it, and feel free to scan the QR code. Thank you, guys.